Cinderella's father has gone by two different names depending on which version of the story that you refer to. But no matter how you shape it, he was not a good person. He may have spoiled his daughter and been the only good influence on her life she could remember from childhood, but Sir Richard, or Lord Tremaine, did not care for those around him. At least, not as much as he cared about his own comfort. And because of that, it's starting to seem like the reason he married Lady Tremaine was more messed up than Disney led us all to believe. Now, for the sake of the rest of this video and to spare confusion, I'll be referring to him as Cinderella's dad or as Sir Richard. You see, before he ever laid eyes on Lady Tremaine, Cinderella's dad had already found his happily ever after. According to every version of the Cinderella story, including the animated Disney movie and the book entitled Cold Hearted by Serena Valentino, Sir Richard was a very happy and originally wealthy gentleman. He enjoyed his life at his family's chateau alongside his first wife and daughter. Now, not much is known about Cinderella's mother, and the most that we've seen of her was actually in the live-action adaptation that was released in 2015. In that movie, she actually shared some screen time with her daughter, Cinderella, as well as Richard. One thing that's really worth noting is an important moment that came after her mother's death. In fact, it came after he married Lady Tremaine, but managed to prove nonetheless that Sir Richard truly loved his first wife more than anything. In what ended up being his last heart-to-heart -heart moment with his daughter, Richard told Cinderella, or Ella as they often called her, and reassured her that her mom was always around. He explained that even if Cinderella couldn't see her, his late wife was still there watching over her, and that's why they must cherish their home and everything around them. During this moment in the movie, he openly admitted to missing her, showing that his love for his first wife was long-lasting and not something he would have gotten over quickly. So it stands to reason that the pain that Sir Richard felt from losing his first wife made it extremely difficult for him to move forward and love again. This means that he had an ulterior motive for marrying Lady Tremaine, but what could he have possibly been looking for in such a relationship? According to Serena Valentino's novel Cold Hearted, Sir Richard had large debts to pay off for one, along with some other seriously messed up reasons. It's unclear exactly where all of the debt came from or where all of Richard's money went, considering he clearly came from a wealthy family to be able to live in such a nice chateau. But if you consider what's known about his daughter's upbringing before she became a servant to her stepfamily, it's pretty clear that he wasn't the wisest with his fortune. The original 1950 animated Cinderella mentioned that following the death of Cinderella's mother, Sir Richard didn't know how to help his daughter deal with the loss. According to the movie, as an attempt to compensate for the loss, Richard tried to buy his daughter's happiness. He purchased her countless gifts and luxuries all in hopes to simply see his daughter smile again. And while that's a nice sentiment, he really should have just tried to talk to her. It's amazing how resilient young minds can really be, and of course the conversation wouldn't take away the pain of losing a beloved mother, but sometimes a child just needs the parent to tell them that it's okay to be sad and to grieve. Instead, Sir Richard threw money at the problem, hoping that it would just go away. It's even been argued among fans whether or not Cinderella's companions Bruno and Major were gifted to her to console the child after her mother passed. Some fans theorize that the bloodhound and horse belonged to Richard beforehand and were simply left to Cinderella after he passed away, but others have speculated that he got them for her as a present. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but horses are expensive. As he wasted his wealth on luxurious gifts, he slowly ran himself into pretty steep debt. At least that's how it went in Serena Valentino's novel. So in order to keep himself afloat and maintain his lush lifestyle, he decided to marry into another fortune, which Lady Tremaine certainly had. But surely there had to be more to it than Sir Richard simply being a gold digger, right? Because it also seemed like Sir Richard couldn't cut it as a single parent and needed someone to take care of his daughter for him. That's right, I didn't say help take care of his daughter, I said take care of his daughter for him. At least that's how it was portrayed in Cold Hearted by Serena Valentino. In the book, it was explained that he couldn't handle raising a daughter on his own, and because of his dire financial situation, he definitely couldn't afford childcare. So what possible solution could he come up with that would not only benefit Cinderella, but also provide him with extra money in his pocket? Well, marry a wealthy widow, of course. This was actually a point that they touched on in the original animated film as well, only they didn't necessarily do it to make Sir Richard appear in a bad light. Instead, they explained that Cinderella's father felt that she needed some sort of maternal figure to look up to since she no longer had her mother, which ultimately led him to make the decision to remarry. But how could he possibly find someone willing to meet all of his demands and needs? This is where Lady Tremaine came in, a woman who met all of Sir Richard's prerequisites that he could lure into his life. You see, with Serena Valentino's book, fans finally got some long overdue backstory for Lady Tremaine that showed us exactly where she came from and who she was before she was the infamous evil stepmother. According to Cold Hearted, Lady Tremaine had spent the majority of her life in London. She had a happy
happy life with her beloved husband and two daughters, Drizella and Anastasia. Unfortunately, that all changed when her husband succumbed to an illness and passed away, leaving her devastated. In the book, it's explained that Lady Tremaine was very heartbroken when her husband died and that she hadn't moved on or remarried for six years. And even then, she didn't plan on falling in love. However, at a house party that she attended six years after her husband died, she met Sir Richard, a man who somehow managed to sweep her off her feet. Little did Lady Tremaine know, though, most of what he told her was a lie. You see, Lady Tremaine felt like she was madly in love with Richard, and even she found that odd considering how practical of a person she was. But he convinced her that he loved her deeply and could give her a happy life in the many kingdoms. In the book, Lady Tremaine quickly agreed to marry the man that she had just met, and without hesitating, she uprooted her life and the lives of her daughters and moved them to Richard's chateau. Once there, she believed that she would be able to move on with her life while also honoring her husband's memory and taking care of her family. However, it wouldn't be her family that she would be forced to care for, considering Richard ordered her around like a servant rather than a wife. I wonder, was there any part of her that suspected the mess that Lady Tremaine was about to get herself into by marrying Sir Richard? Because when all was said and done, it turned out that Sir Richard's affections were more of a smoke and mirror situation rather than true love, and eventually he would play a crucial role in transforming Lady Tremaine into the cold-hearted villainous stepmother we all know her as today. According to Cold Hearted, Lady Tremaine realized that she was only brought to the many kingdoms to act as Sir Richard's nanny and piggy bank instead of his beloved wife. She was not okay with that, but there wasn't much that she could do to get herself, and more importantly, her daughters, out of that situation. In the book, Valentino explained that Lady Tremaine tried to signal to her friends back in London. She wanted them to know that she needed help, but there were forces that were actively working against her. In the book, a magical mixture of witches and fairies worked to ensure that all of her cries for help went unheard and unanswered. She had nobody to save her from the life that she'd been deceived into, which meant that all she could do was continue to act as a maid for her so-called husband, as well as his daughter. Granted, Cinderella didn't do anything wrong in that situation. It's not her fault that her father didn't process his own grief or help her deal with her own. Sir Richard pushed Lady Tremaine to her breaking point, and from what we can tell in the book, he didn't show her an ounce of the love that was promised when they married each other. Not to mention, he continued to use all of the money that she had left from her past marriage to pay off his debts, all while neglecting his new stepfamily. This caused Lady Tremaine to grow colder and crueler, and when the time came and Cinderella's dad passed away inexplicably, she was already too far gone. As you know, following the death of Sir Richard, Lady Tremaine took over as the head of the household, and Cinderella's place at the top quickly fell to the bottom of the totem pole. Lady Tremaine forced her late husband's daughter into a life of servitude and subjected her to the same horrible life that Sir Richard imposed on her, thus stepping into the role of wicked stepmother that we're all familiar with today. In his play The Merchant of Venice, William Shakespeare wrote, The sins of the father are to be laid upon the children, and Cinderella is a perfect example. Sir Richard treated Lady Tremaine horribly, according to Cold Hearted, and because of his actions and sins, the evil stepmother was born, and she forced the same treatment onto the innocent Cinderella. Now, there's no question that Lady Tremaine turned into a truly vile person who had no right to take her anger out on her stepdaughter. But how do you feel about the reason Sir Richard chose to marry her in the first place? Do you think he really was that awful that he simply married her to be a nanny and, and to take all of her money? Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below.